Good afternoon, everyone. We're joined by Huntsville City FC Director of Soccer Operations, Matt Cairns, Huntsville City FC Managing Director of Business Operations, Chad Emerson, and Huntsville City FC's newest head coach, Chris O'Neill. Chad, I'll let you start. Uh, talk about uh, this exciting day in, our clubs, in the club's history. Yeah, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us here at beautiful Wicks Family Field at Joe Davis Stadium. Uh, really exciting time for the club. Uh, we have, we think, one of the absolute best coaches in soccer, in Next Pro, joining us, kicking off on Saturday. It's going to be a beautiful match on Saturday. Fireworks return, a lot of great players, and of course, our awesome new coach. So uh, I want to welcome you, Chris, to the Rocket City. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, would you like to say some words about Coach O'Neill? Yeah, thanks everyone for coming and obviously we're delighted to introduce Chris O'Neill as the new head coach of Huntsville City FC. It was a very thorough process to find the right person and in Chris we believe we've got one of the best player developers in the country. Um, his, his track record speaks for itself, his work at Sporting Kansas City, uh, into Miami, worked with a number of MLS homegrowns, had huge success with his teams on the field in results as well. And we believe with our talented roster We've now one of the best coaches in the country and uh, look forward to seeing his work with them and the team overall. Chris, uh, I'll let you have the floor. Uh, what would you just like to say to uh, the Huntsville City FC fans uh, about this opportunity? First, I would like to thank Matt, thank Chad for the opportunity. I'm extremely excited um, for the fans. We are, the players are excited. We feel a renewed sense of energy, um, excitement, and, and we're ready to see everyone out at the Joe this Saturday. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, Nick, would you like to go first? Sure. Uh, Coach, welcome to Huntsville. Thank you. Uh, you know, you're not new to the Yellowhammer State. You started your uh, your college career three years down at UAB. Uh, did you ever imagine coming back to Alabama? And, and what was that phone call like when you found out you got the job? Yeah, no, I, uh, I I loved Alabama when I was here. I think it's a fantastic state. Um, I didn't imagine it, um, but the opportunity presented itself, and it's a fantastic opportunity. The project here is extremely exciting, and the support that this city has shown this club so far has been absolutely incredible. And I think it's one of the most unique atmospheres in this entire league, um, and it's ex extremely exciting to be a part of. In the press release, you said you were intrigued by the, the top tier talent, I believe you called it. Uh, what about this year's group has excited you of things you can improve upon in the future? Yeah. So one is I think that we have players that are willing to learn. Um, they're willing to try. They're willing to give effort. And all the games this year, uh, I know some of the results haven't gone exactly the right direction, but the players seem to keep fighting. They, they show bravery. Um, and, you know, I look at the last game that they had and it's, it's tremendous to continue to build off of. Um, the potential for them to, to rise to the top is there. It's just about developing the right habits and, and going about things in the right way consistently. And the more consistent that we can be, then potentially, potentially that potential will rise to the top. Chris, uh, uh, Carl Brother, uh, WFFTV here in Huntsville. I, I did want to ask you uh, about just the process and what made uh, Huntsville City FC attractive to you uh, and the facilities and, and everything that this franchise has to offer that uh, was an ideal choice for you as in your professional career. Okay. So, what made it an ideal um, opportunity? You have a city that has a fan base, and I think the, the fans provide a certain amount of pressure and a certain amount of added elements that is necessary for a player to truly make it as a professional. Um, we can recreate environments in terms of cognitive demands as much as we might like, but then the reality of having actual people there supporting you is it, it adds another element that is impossible to recreate. So that is very exciting. The facilities here, we have everything that we need in order to create a true professional environment in terms of fields, um, fields if we're playing on turf, fields if we're playing on grass in order to prepare, um, locker room and facilities. Oftentimes, a lot of places they're forced to share things and you're limited in terms of training windows and, and that type of thing. Um, here we have no real limitations. Um, and the movement from players between Nashville and Huntsville is very smooth. It's a, it's a clean process and it's, you have all the right tools and ingredients for high-level player development. Philosophy is one thing, and that's kind of, that'll take care of itself in the next couple of weeks and in the duration of your tenure here. 
I just want to ask in just the first couple of weeks, uh, just goals for you with this organization uh, and the players uh, moving forward as they continue to kind of develop uh, under what you want to try to accomplish here. Yeah, so for the next couple of weeks, I think it's uh... – I've been fortunate and it's very rare in a situation in a, in a club standpoint that the first team head coach and the second team head coach come in at the same time. So we have a unique opportunity in terms of getting alignment with where we are here in Huntsville and what it looks like in Nashville as well. So it'll be about continuing to understand the game model and what ultimately our club wants to get to. Um, but how do we make progress in terms of what the game model, game style that we want to play as a club, as uh, as as I guess a combined collective club. Trevor, uh, how much are you looking forward to that game against Nashville? Let's see, like what kind of crowd do you want to see here for that first major league team that will be in Huntsville since 1999, I believe. How excited are you for that? Yeah, that's going to be uh, extremely exciting. I think I know the players will be very up for it. I think the. The fans, it's a, it's a unique opportunity that you have a MLS club coming into your town to see you. Um, that doesn't happen often. Um, so I think it'll be a one-of-a-kind a one night, and I, I imagine the the place is going to be pretty uh, packed. How do you feel like your, your MLS experience is going to help you continue to develop this, this roster? So it's a it's mixed with a fine a, a good balance of some players that have certain experiences, some players that have been in MLS environments, um, and with each player, what I've learned over time, they they all have different motivations and they all have different reasons for why they want to be successful or why they want to be a, a player, and they all have different motivators. So in my experience, I've worked for with with kids of you know all different nationalities. Um, they come from many different types of backgrounds. Um, there's certain ones, the way that you talk to them, it can't be the same way that I would talk to you. They, so you have to, you find ways that you can find the right triggers for their motivation and how you, how you push them to get the right response. Um, so in my experience with in MLS, you have a wide range of the type of players, kids that are from the U.S., from south of the U.S., from, in, in Sporting Kansas City, we were, uh, we were forced to rely a lot on outside recruiting. So our players came from all parts of the country. Uh, it was a very, very small number actually ended up from Kansas City. And Miami, it was completely different. They came from all over the world. So it's a balance of, of how you manage and how you talk to certain players to get them all to buy into a certain vision and get them pointed in the right direction. And once that happens, then this is when you see good football, good soccer. Working primarily with U17s and U15s, what does it take as a coach to sort of get through to guys that are that young? You'd be surprised how old some of them think they are. <laughs> um, and I'm sure if any anyone has teenagers, then they, they all know everything already, and it can be a very challenging time. Um, but it is, it's, it's a process. And, you know, it's no different than essentially parenting. You're going to have to tell them, you, you, you say it one time, okay. You're going to have to say it 15 times before it hopefully sinks in, and then there's a hard lesson that they ultimately learn it from. So it's the pointing out and, and figuring out certain details, certain things that you can trigger, and you hope that you get a, the right response from them. Um, but I think patience is an important thing, trusting the process and, and not being too quick to go away from a, a mistake and being able to say, okay, he's going to learn from it, and we stick with what our, our vision is. And the more that you have consistency and the more that you have a vision, the more that you have a plan, then over time you start to see the wheels turn. Just got here earlier this week and already making your sideline debut in two days. What's that? What's that sort of going to look like? Yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind um, in terms of travel, relocation, everything. Um, we had social media people were out asking about favorite parts of Huntsville so far, and you know, for me, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the Joe. I think Joe on the Saturday night, Sunday night is going to be my favorite part of Huntsville. But at the same time, all I've seen so far is the facility and my apartment that doesn't have a bed currently. <laughs> Chad, I do want to ask you a question. You know, your organization and the franchise as a whole did its respective due diligence to, to you know, identify someone to lead this franchise. I want to ask you, well, why was it so important for you, uh, your front office, to, to take your time to make sure that you get it right and, and have someone that you continue to have someone that you help develop these young men? 
people uh, throughout the rest of the franchise and organization. Yeah, I really want to give Matt and Mike Jacobs, the entire NSC team, all the credit. I mean, they did an incredible job. I mean, we're on the business side, so we're looking forward to selling the success. But uh, the Nashville team working, I mean, Matt's a great leader. When we talk about best in class, we think we have a best in class coach, best in class director of soccer operations, best in class front office. So it's just putting all those pieces together. So real kudos to the uh, soccer operations and finding which we think is one of the elite coaches. Yeah, I think obviously with, with Nashville bringing in BJ, um, we wanted to make sure we were fully aligned as, as an organization. And um, as I've already mentioned, Chris's work speaks for itself, but we wanted to make sure we went through a really thorough process. Um, and Chris's attention to detail stood out from day one. He had to go through a few more conversations, but he just excelled throughout that. Um, obviously, we were very familiar with his teams. Our academies have, have played against Chris's teams and, and had some difficult results against them. So. All different people within our organization have had great experiences of Chris O'Neill's work and his personality shone through in the, in the interview process as well. So it became a no-brainer for us, honestly. Um, we wanted to make sure we took our time to, to go through the process, but Chris was a standout candidate throughout. Does anyone else have any questions? Coach, tell us about the first time you kicked the ball. The first time I kicked the ball? Yeah. Um, I think it's a story that my mom told me because I, I I don't think I was old enough to remember. I I was they gave me a soccer ball and I grew up in Georgia, so very similar here. You have a bunch of red clay and you know red ant hills, and somehow the ball went into the ant hill, and I went in after the ball as well, and I just it was the first time, and that's what she tells me, and ever since then it's been kind of an addiction to me. And then the path to being coach. The path into coaching. So I was, uh, I've always been obsessed. I've always been obsessed. So even, you know, as a kid, I would spend, come home from school, I would watch, you know, games as back when there wasn't the availability that we had now. Um, but always Bundesliga, Syria, um, Premier League, everything. Um, and eventually, after I stopped playing, I got into it and, and ended up, uh, with a few injuries and during the times that I was injured, he said, here, go do these camps. And then after the camps, then kind of got recognized and then got pulled into the club scene and then bounced around from club scene and eventually now we're here. With that, we will conclude today's press conference. Thank you everybody for coming.